This is a 48-year-old gentleman who's got a long history of quite severe diabetes and um, developed heart failure about uh, eight years ago. It's when he was really quite young. And um, he was investigated at that time and his coronary arteries were normal. So there's no evidence of major coronary artery disease as a cause of, of his heart failure. And uh, probably this is what might be called diabetic cardiomyopathy. And um, he's recently been admitted because he deteriorated a lot with uh, worsening heart failure, severe edema of his legs, severe swelling of his legs and face and the whole body. And because of that, he got skin infection with cellulitis of the legs and also, unfortunately, in this hand. And of course, being diabetic, it makes him more prone to infections as well. He's now improved a lot with high-dose intravenous diuretics and also metolazone. And he's lost um, nearly 14 kilograms in weight. He's obviously, though, still breathless. And um, uh, even at rest, you can see that his breathing rate is faster than normal. He also has some degree of renal failure because of the diabetes. Uh, but only a relatively mild proteinuria, so the swelling is not uh, due to nephrotic syndrome, it's, this is heart failure. So we come to examine him and be a bit careful because of his swollen hand here, but we can feel the pulse, from the radial pulse, and the first thing we notice is that the, the pulse is irregular. Okay. And um, he's a little bit pale, but not too bad. His face is still a little bit swollen, um, which is unusual for heart failure, because usually patients with heart failure don't get facial swelling because they can't lie flat, unlike patients with nephrotic syndrome. Um, but it's much improved. Uh, when we come feel the carotid, the pulse is actually quite difficult to feel because it's a very small volume. It's a very small volume pulse indeed, but with relatively normal character. His JVP is it's certainly better than it was, but it still remains elevated, even at this position. He's not quite at 45 degrees. He's a bit sitting up a bit more than that. Um, but we can see here this venous pulsation quite nicely, and it comes up to at least to about here. Um, Previously, it was right up to his earlobe when he came into hospital, but with the diuretic treatment, it has improved quite a bit. But we can still see this venous pulsation just coming up to about here. If I press gently over his liver, we can see that it becomes a little bit more obvious. Do that once more. Okay. An examination of the, of the precordium, there's obviously no scars, he's not had any surgery, um, but you can see just over here a rather a, a, a pulsation, rather diffuse, which is the apex beat. And by palpation, we can f discern that the point of most lateral and inferior movement is about here, so quite markedly displaced. Uh, the normal position was just here, and this one is at, out to the anterior auxiliary line and in the sixth intercostal space. Palpating the apex gives a lot of useful information about the function of the left ventricle, and in this case, the apex is very diffuse and rather weak, in suggesting that the underlying left ventricle is also rather weak and diffusely enlarged. Coming over to the right ventricle, there's no definite evidence of right ventricular hypertrophy, and there are no thrills at all, no aortic, palmy, VSD, or mitral thrills. So auscultation in the mitral area, 
is a tachycardia, but his heart rate is, is regular, uh, unlike earlier when he was having uh, quite a number of ectopics. And there is, in this area, a soft systolic murmur, pan-systolic murmur, due to some mitral regurgitation. But one can clearly hear um, an extra heart sound. And this is a characteristic gallop rhythm. First and second, and then a third heart sound. The gallop rhythm can also be heard over here as well, suggesting there might be a right ventricular gallop rhythm as well, a right ventricular third heart sound. There's no pulmonary murmur. The second heart sound is splitting normally. And there's no aortic murmur. Okay. Okay, I'm No aortic murmur and no carotid brewery. So, in summary, this uh, 48 year old man's got um, diabetes and uh, really severe heart failure. He's got a very enlarged heart with a gallop rhythm and uh, a, a, in some degree of much regurgitation, a mild degree of much regurgitation. Um, he's on maximum medical therapy. Uh, with diuretics, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, spironolactone, and he is actually uh, being considered for a transplant.